You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. That will conclude the closing argument. Unless either side has a rebuttal, defense counsel. I wish I had something more, some new evidence. Don't worry about it, Mr. Christopher. You did all you could. Counsel for the defense. Uh, no, Your Honor. The defense rests. How about the prosecution? Nothing more, Your Honor. Very well, then. The jury will now retire for deliberations. Bailiff? This way, please. Court will reconvene for the verdict. Until then, we'll stand in recess. On your feet, Grant. Do you really have to put the cuffs on me? Hands behind your back. I'll stay with you to the verdict, Sin. It doesn't make any difference. This way. It may take a while. It never does. <laughs> Mr. Grant? No statements to the press. If I could have one more word. I told you, Mr. Carson. Oh, why not? Give the reader something. I wouldn't recommend it in case we file an appeal. We won't. I guarantee it. End of the hall. I know that. A room with a table and three chairs, bars on the window, two policemen outside. It never changes. You can wait in here with your client, counselor. All right. I told you there's no need, really. Go get a cup of coffee, just drink it fast. What about that interview? It's okay, guard. All right, we'll be right outside. Knock when you're through. How do you do it, Mr. Grant? Do what? You don't seem worried about the jury. Still believe this isn't happening? Oh, it's happening, all right. That's the problem. I can't stop it from happening. Then you do fear capital punishment. As much as anyone else. But you, all of you, are the ones who should worry. Because if I go, you go too. That's the part I don't understand. I'll go on with my life. We all will. But if the judgment is against you... Where do I know you from? Pardon? Help me out here. Was it grade school, my first job? We met when the trial started. No, before that. Your face. Oh, well. There's much time left. You never can tell. The longer the jury stays out, the better your chances. That's usually the way it works. Not today. If I could ask you something else. Sorry. Time's up. Let's go. Yeah, jury's ready. I know. So long, Mr. Carson. See you in my dreams. How did he know? Sit up straight. Here, here they come. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. And what is that verdict? We find the defendant, Adam Grant, guilty of murder in the first degree. Order in the court. The defendant will rise. The defendant will rise. Adam. What? Oh, all right. Let's get it over with. Adam Grant, you have been tried by a jury of your peers and found guilty. Do you have anything you wish to say before sentence is passed? Very well. It is the sentence of this court that for the, for the brutal, brutal and despicable, despicable crime, crime of murder, murder in the first degree, in the first degree you, you shall be put, put to death, to death means by of means electrocution. of electrocution. No, not again. You can't make me die again. 
restrain the prisoner. Put the leg irons on it. I'll put them down. You can't make me die again. Oh, God, please. 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 Take him away. Tell them, Mr. District Attorney, that this isn't real. Make them understand that they're only a dream I'm having. You fools! If you kill me, you'll die too. Mr. Carson, you believe me? Make him believe. Tell the District Attorney he prosecuted himself and everybody in this building and everybody in the world. Tell him, Mr. Carson, before it's too late. Tell him. Tell him. Adam Grant, a nondescript kind of man, found guilty of murder and sentenced to the electric chair. Like every other criminal caught in the wheels of justice, he's scared right down to the marrow of his bones. But it isn't prison that scares him. The long, silent nights of waiting, the slow walk to the little room, or even death itself. It's something else that holds Adam Grant in the hot, sweaty grip of fear. Something worse than any punishment this world has to offer. Something found only in the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Shadow Play. Starring Ernie Hudson, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Ready for another one, Mr. Carson? Maybe just a pinch, my good man. Rocks, was it? Yeah. No, wait. Something different. Let's try gin this time. What's a gin drink? Mm, Tom Collins? Right. I like the sound of that. I wonder who Mr. Tom Collins was to have a drink named after him. (laughs) Beats me. What's in a name? Like Adam Grant... Who is he, really? That guy they arrested? Tried and convicted, post-haste. Quite a mysterious fella. Yeah. Well, not from around here. His identity is not the problem. He had virtually no defense. But he has some very peculiar ideas. You talked to him? A few times, for the paper. He's seriously disturbed, mentally speaking. (laughs) No kidding has some crazy notion that this is all a dream, that it's happened before. Huh? And that it'll happen again. I'd say he's certifiably insane. Well, that won't save him from the chair. No, but maybe it should. Yeah, sure. I'll just go knock over the bank and tell him I'm some kind of a nut. Well, that ought to do it. (laughs) But what if he is... If he was incompetent to stand trial. His lawyer should have thought of that. Some kid from the public defender's office. His first case. Well, you pull something like that, you pay the price. You know what I mean? Hey, how's the Tom Collins? Hmm. Out of this world, if I do say so. You should meet his friend, Johnny Walker. (laughs) An excellent idea. Top draw. (laughs) He really got to you, didn't he? To whom do you refer? The creep. Ah, well. I am but a lowly newspaper man. It's all quite beyond my control, I suppose. Hey, take my advice. Forget it. Hey, ever meet my other friend? What's his name? Well, they call him Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> Coley, lay off that thing, will you? Yeah, people are trying to sleep. Sorry, fellas. I didn't know I was bothering anybody. That's better. It's... It's all right, Coley. It's my fault. I got you out of a bad movie I saw once about death row. Just like everything else in this corny dream. Grant, 
Let me give you some advice. What's that, Jiggs? Stop thinking about it. Don't! Why do they want to hurt me? You think about it, you crack up, like Phillips there. Listen to him. Mother, they're, they're gonna fry me. I, I never did anything. Phillips! <laughs> Shut your face! <laughs> See there? A month ago he was a human being. Now what is he? An animal. Why? Because he couldn't stop thinking about it. I know. It's... it's just different with me. Different how? I can't stop. That's all I can do. Think. You mean you're looking forward to it? You want to die? No. Well, then it ain't different with you. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. Sometimes I wonder, too, what it's gonna be like. But that's a bad way of thinking. Don't lead nowhere. I'll tell you what it's like. Yeah? Yeah. They come for you a few minutes early. That's so they can cut your trouser legs. They even shave your head at least part way. Then they open your cell. You walk out and down the cell block to a hall. Past two great doors at the end. 78 steps exactly to the final door painted green. It's got a little glass pane with chicken wire, but you can't see anything on the other side. There's a guard who opens the door for you. And you go into a room. It's tan. It's all tan. There's nothing in it except the chair. It's made out of wood, and it's big, so it feels like a chair you used to sit in when you were a kid. Hard and solid and not very comfortable. Uh, cut it out. They strap your arm and legs with thick buckles, and then they attach the electrodes. It's funny. They always feel cold to the touch at first. Man, talk like you've been through it already. Then they drop the mask over your head. It's musty. It smells like an old sofa. And then you wait. Every muscle tense, straining. Any second, any second, then... You can almost hear it through the wall. They pull the switch. Ah, there. Two beautiful, beautiful steaks. Almost done. Who's that, Hank? Why, I don't know. You expecting anybody? No. You sit right there. I'll get it. Madam, I am a poor lost traveler seeking food and lodging for the night. I don't believe it. You're loaded. Mr. District Attorney. Hello, Paul. I've just been insulted by your wife. She says I'm intoxicated. Well, aren't you? That has nothing to do with it. Your attitude toward the press needs some adjusting. So does mine, as a matter of fact. Hey, hey, take it easy there. That's my best gin. Dear friends, when I die, I don't want to see any full bottles around. That's not funny. It wasn't meant to be. It was meant to be a comment on the short, unhappy life of Paul Carson. Won't you join me? Come, drink and be merry for tomorrow. Oh, shut up, Paul. I knew it. I knew it the minute you walked in. We're not nervous enough? Oh, no. We have to listen to the great city editor with his news behind the news. If I'm not welcome here, then I shall go elsewhere and breathe my last. Oh, never mind. I've had enough of this anyway. I'm going to lie down. Good night, dear. What about dinner? The steaks are almost ready. Take them out of the broiler in five minutes. There are a couple baked potatoes, too. Aren't you having any? I've lost my appetite. Hank, I wanted to talk to you. Now, don't start again. I've got to. We're running out of time. I'm not upset or disturbed or nervous anymore. I'm scared. That's ridiculous. I know it is, but that doesn't help. You mean to say you believe that crazy story? God help me, Hank. But I do. At least I believe it's possible. Oh, come on. Well, why not? Can we prove he's wrong? Maybe not, but that's a poor reason for believing in anything. I can't prove the world isn't going to end, but it isn't. 
Or do you believe that, too? I'm not sure what I believe. This guy killed a man in cold blood just like that, and he's going to pay. Those are the facts. Anything else is speculation. Fantasy. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I put my entire staff on it. An open and shut case. Then why are you so steamed up about it? I'm not. I'll tell you why. Because a little part of you believes, too. Just a little tiny part of Henry Ritchie says, maybe Grant is right. Maybe this is all a dream. The thought has occurred to you, hasn't it? Hank, we've known each other a long time. Haven't you ever stopped and said to yourself, this couldn't be real. It's too easy, too pat. I couldn't have a lovely wife like Carol and a lovely home and money in the bank. Not in any real world. Haven't you, Hank? Well, of course. Everyone has. If you're a success, you're bound to think it's a dream at some point or other. If not, you think it's a nightmare. This only proves that Grant is human. He can't believe what's happening to him. So he tries to convince himself that it isn't, not really. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Hank, I've been talking to this guy a lot lately, and he makes sense. Go down there and see for yourself. Don't take my word for it. It wouldn't do any good. You've only listened to him once, when he had that outburst in the courtroom. That was enough. Hank, for my sake, please, go and see him. Let him tell you. He's only got three hours and 15 minutes left. He'll say anything. You're an intelligent man. You'll be able to see through it if he's lying. If not for my sake, do it for yourself, for your own peace of mind. My mind was at peace until you walked in. Was it? Please, Hank. It's pointless, but... Thanks. It may turn out to be important. More important than we know. No. No, Mother, don't, don't let them strap me in. Enough already, Phillips. Yes. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a good boy. Grant. Yeah? What's the matter? You don't like your food? It's fine. Then how come you didn't touch it? Because my stomach's tied up in knots. <laughs> how would you feel about your last meal? I told you we would have got you anything you wanted. All you had to do was name it. Except maybe a cake with a hacksaw in it. That wouldn't do me any good. It wouldn't change a thing. Well, we did the best we could. Steak, ice cream. You shouldn't have bothered. I don't even like ice cream. All melted now anyway. I thought you liked steak. I do. But a condemned man isn't supposed to enjoy his last meal. How could he? Look here. I'm not supposed to, but you want something else? I'll try to get it for you. No, thanks. Give it to Jiggs. Maybe he's hungry. You don't have to ask me twice. Pass the tray through. That's mighty nice of you, Grant. Don't mention it. Guard? What's the time? 9.02. Plenty left. Get some rest if you want. Mmm. That's pretty good steak. You ought to have some. Knock yourself out. Hey, Grant. Don't you know this is a tradition? The one time where the screws will give you anything you want. Yeah, I know. That's why I dreamed it this way. Bad stomach and all. Coley, want some? Well, what you got? Baked potato, catch. Hey, thanks. What time you got, Jiggs? Don't you have a watch? It might have stopped. 9.03. You got a date? Nah. Just expecting someone. Let me guess. The governor, right? With a nice fat pardon in his fist. No, it's the district attorney. He usually comes around nine. The DA himself, huh? You must be a real important person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The most important man in the world. Ow! You got
got to have some sense of humor, pal. You could have broke your hand that way. Now it has stopped. Wait a minute. There's something else that isn't right. I'll have to remember next time. How's that? Prisoners about to be executed aren't allowed to wear watches because of the glass and metal. You don't say. You ought to tell that to the warden. She'll be real interested in your opinion. I don't know who the warden is this time. It might have changed. This way, Mr. Ritchie. Thank you, guard. See? What did I tell you? Right on time. Say, how'd you know? Ten minutes. That should be plenty. You can leave me with him. Be back when you're ready. Hello, Grant. Hello, Mr. Ritchie. You don't seem surprised to see me. I'm not. You won't drop the act, will you? I don't have to act. You always come. <laughs> I mean, the district attorney always comes. It's not you every time. Grant. Yes? Why bother to stick to this dream story of yours? What does it matter now? If I could change it, I would, believe me. Only I don't know how. It can't possibly do you any good at this point. You realize that. <sighs> I should. After all this time, every night I explain, and every night it's the same. Explain it again. Well, it's very simple. When I die, you die. And everybody in this world dies. Because this world does not exist. It's a dream of mine, a nightmare. Can't you understand that? No, Grant, I can't understand that, and not because it's a new idea. I can't understand it or accept it because it doesn't make any kind of logical sense. But it does! It's the only thing that does make logical sense. Not what I understand logic to mean. Think it through. I tell you, it's not logical. That's only one kind of thinking. Reason it out. Think, man. Take you, for instance. Here we go. The butterfly dreaming it's a butterfly hypothesis. Just stick with the basic facts. That's all you need. Do you think that you, a district attorney, would ever visit a man who was about to be executed in real life? Have you ever done that? Not that I recall. Of course not. They wouldn't let you in here. I'll bet they didn't even search you. And now they're leaving us alone in a locked cell together? You're the man who sent me here. I might beat your brains out. I'm a murderer, aren't I? I'm sure we're being monitored. We must be. Or take me. Have you ever heard of a case where a man was condemned and put to death this quickly? There would be years of appeals, wouldn't there? Your lawyer didn't file any. There are automatic appeals required by law. And don't you think it's a little too pat that I was represented by a public defender who had never even tried a capital case before? Oh, come on. Look around you. This isn't a real prison. It's a cliche drawn from every old movie ever made. The guy with the harmonica, the nutcase, the guards, everyone's a type. They could be from central casting. Well, you're certainly not typical. How do you know? You don't know what I am. You don't know any more about me than you did when it started. It's like I didn't have a past before this. I'm some sort of mysterious stranger, like a character in a story. There are hundreds of vagrants in, in every, every town, town without, without names, names, without histories. History. Stop that. How did I just know what you were going to say? Isn't that a little weird? Or do you believe in mind reading? That's not too weird for you? We know you're mentally sound. You were found competent to stand trial. I don't think you're deliberately lying to me. So what are you left with? Some other explanation? I'm going to destroy this story of yours, Grant, once and for all. Now you say that all this is a dream and that when you're electrocuted, you wake up, and when you wake up, we all disappear, right? That's right. And then it starts all over again. What about our parents? 
and our parents' parents, and everybody who never even heard of you. What about the billions of people? Well, what about them, Mr. Ritchie? Every dream builds its own world. Have you ever had a dream with blank spaces in it? It's filled out in every detail, complete with a past, and as long as you stay asleep, a future. What about us, then? The people in this world, when we sleep and dream? Or don't we? Is that when you're supposed to be up and around and wherever you really are? You only sleep and dream because I dream you that way. All right, now answer me this. You're scared. Why? Why are you scared? You've got to wake up sometime, even if you're electrocuted, so why don't you just sit back and enjoy it till then? <laughs> enjoy it? Let me tell you something, Mr. Ritchie. Huh? How, how soundly do you sleep? What's that got to do with it? Well, I mean, you dream, don't you? Certainly, sometimes. Haven't you ever been hurt in one of those dreams? Haven't you ever fallen out of a window or been drowned or tortured? Physically and mentally? We all have nightmares. You have. Well, don't you remember how real it seemed? How you woke up screaming? Let me ask you something, Mr. Ritchie. How do you like to wake up screaming every night? That's what I do. Because I dream the same dream night after night after night. It's this one. It changes a little bit. The people get shuffled around, but it's the same dream. You got to believe me. I can't go on dying. I can't. Not every night. I can't. I can't. Get your hands off me. Let him go. Out this way. I'm telling you the truth, Mr. Ritchie. Please, let me live, and I'll keep you alive. I'll dream you every night, just as you are now. Your life, your house. Wait a minute. I'll prove it. Your wife. She has a steak waiting for you. Isn't that right? Go home, look in the oven. It'll be something else when you get there. I swear. I can change the small details. You'll see. Please. Please! Carol, are you up? In here, darling. The steaks. Oh, that's right. You did say you wanted steaks tonight. Carol, don't be offended, but may I see them? I'm sorry. I thought I'd save the steaks for tomorrow night. I hope you don't mind. Just let me have a look. What's wrong, Hank? That's a roast. What about it? I thought you liked roast. Hank? Hank, what about it? Grant. Grant! Yes? Did I wake you up? No. You didn't wake me. <laughs> What's so funny? Nothing. Nothing's funny at all. Well, thanks for giving your meal away. It was nothing, really. I thought I heard you laughing in your sleep. No chance of that. Hey, Grant, listen. I've been thinking about what you said, about all this being a dream, you know? So? Well, no. Maybe it won't work, but maybe it'd be worth a try. What would? If you told that story to the governor, he might let you out on a psycho. He wouldn't believe me. Well, you never can be sure. You don't believe me, do you, Jiggs? Ah, oh, that don't matter. If you think it's true, see, why, then you got a loose cog somewhere. And they don't burn guys with loose cogs. I wonder. I could try proving it to you. Prove what? Jiggs, don't you think that all this is just... Just a little too much the way it should be? I don't get you. Well, I mean, it's so perfect. For one thing, I got tried and sentenced the same day. It doesn't work like that. Huh? 
But you see, that's the way I saw it in my mind, and that's the way it is. All the movies and TV shows when I was a kid, the comic books, take this place. You, for instance. I know. And Coley, and Phillips, and his mother. <laughs> it is a movie. For all intents and purposes, real death houses aren't like this. But you see, I've never been to a real death house. So what do I know? That's my impression of it. And in my mind, people do get last minute reprieves. Stays of execution, new trials. It's not out of the question. But I played my last card. There's nobody left for me to tell my story to. Except you. No, Jiggs. It won't work. I can't change the basic scenario. I wish to heaven I could. Man, you're really flipped. Now I don't know what you're talking about. That clock over the fireplace, is it accurate? It is. Then, it is 11.45. It'll be over soon. Well, the Brothers Grimm, as I live in... What are you doing up? It's almost midnight. I'm not up. I'm down, like you and your funny friend here. Sorry if we woke you, Carol. I'll be leaving soon. Have they... Not yet. Fifteen more minutes. That's another thing. What is? Think about it, Hank. I'm tired of thinking. Why does it always happen at midnight? Did you ever wonder about that? Because that's when they schedule executions. Yeah, but why? You tell me. Excuse me, boys. I don't suppose anyone would like some coffee? Not now, dear. Hank, according to Grant, he doesn't know anything about these matters except what he sees in the movies. So he told me. And in the movies, it always happens at midnight. That's because movies are technically accurate. Are they? About things like that, at least. Yeah, I always thought so. But that's a strange belief, too, when you come to think of it. Then don't come to think of it. But I've got to think about something, or I'll sit here for the next few minutes with my insides all twisted up. Don't let me interrupt this scintillating conversation. Let me know how it all comes out. See you in the morning. I hope so, Hank. I sincerely hope so. Cut the legs open a little higher. Okay. You just relax, Grant. We'll take care of it. I'm only trying to make it easier for you. When it's time to connect the electrodes. Or the straps. I don't remember. Got it. Pants, legs. Head shaved. I think that's everything. The watch. Take my watch. You don't want it anymore? It's the electricity. It'll melt or fuse or something. He's right. Take it off. Want a uh, cigarette, Grant? I don't smoke. It's bad for my health. <laughs> hey, Screws! You're wasting your time. Shut him up! Shut that guy up! You can't kill Grant. You want to know why? I'll tell you why. Because you're nothing but dreams. Dreams! You hear that, Screws? Bet you didn't know that! Must be a full moon. The animals are restless. Oh, hello, Father. Uh, may I have a moment? Sure thing. Come on, Miller. How are you, my son? Oh, I can't complain. This haircut they gave me, though. Gonna take a while to grow up. Is there anything you wish to talk about in the remaining minutes? No. Then let us pray. There's no need. There is always a need for prayer, my son. What will it do for me? 
Open your heart. God won't forsake you. Only in the real world, Father. Not in a nightmare. You no longer feel a part of this world? I not only feel it, I know it. You're ready for salvation any time up to your last breath. Well, you can save your breath. I've heard it all before. You know, I am wondering something, though. Of course you are. I wonder where I've seen you before. Where did I get your face? It's familiar every time. It's about to come to me. Well, we've never met. Oh, yes. Yes, we have. Father Beeman, of course, Father Beeman, from over at Spring Hill. No wonder I didn't recognize you. That's because you died when I was 10 years old. You were very popular. Everybody came to your funeral. Well, my name is Beeman, but... Um, I yes, yes. And then a young priest came and took your place. That was Carson. You know, I'm using him for the editor this time. Calm your mind, my son. And what about the district attorney, Richie? Richie, he must have been a, a school teacher of mine. Or maybe he was a friend of dad's. Time, Father. Thank you, Warden. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Ready, Mr. Grant. Are you? Are all of you? Let's go. Hey, Grant! They can't do this to you! You're home in bed asleep, remember? Grant! Grant! Time to wake up, boy! Wake up! Wake up! Four more minutes. Well, you can at least get a stay of execution. I know you can do that much. What good would it do? We'd simply have to go through the same thing all over again. Cruel and unusual punishment. Maybe not. Now look, Hank. Forget all the dream stuff. Whether that's true or not, it doesn't matter. What matters is the guy believes it. That means he's got a case. The psychiatrist said... The psychiatrist made a mistake. It won't be the first time. Get a week's stay. Have him checked out again. I can't. Why not? Because we might be wrong. Well, maybe we are. But maybe we're not. And in my book, that's reasonable doubt. Hank, he's sick in the head. Are you going to send a mental incompetent to the chair? I'll regret this, Paul. I'll regret it as long as I live. Hello. This is Henry Ritchie. I want to speak to the governor right away. Seventy-six. Seventy-seven. Seventy-eight. Here we are again. Step on in. Don't fight it. Get the leg straps. I'll do the arms. Please, just get it over with. I don't care. This is an emergency. Wake him up. Hurry. It's 11.58. They're having trouble putting the call through. Yes, this is District Attorney Ritchie. Governor, I don't have time to explain, but I want you to issue a stay of execution in the case of Adam Grant. Here comes the hood. Close your eyes. Not again. Please. Not again. Thank you, Governor. Well? He's calling now. Throw the switch. Yes, ma'am. This is the ward. What did you say? What? I'm sorry, Governor. You're too late. Did he get through? It's out of our hands now. Uh, 
I couldn't sleep. Don't tell me you're still up. See you tomorrow. Yes. You did your best. What in the... What is going on here? How do you mean? Well, I thought we had a fireplace. What did you boys do with it? Do... I'm serious. She's right, Hank. The fireplace... It's gone. That's just a blank wall. Hey, Carol, I don't understand. I... Carol. Carol, where are you? She was standing here a second ago. She just... Paul. Paul! For the love of God, I can't see either of you. In the living room, it's... It's getting dark. It's starting... Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. And what is that verdict? We find the defendant, defendant, Adam, Adam Grant, Grant, guilty of murder, murder in the first, in the first degree. degree. Order in the court. The defendant will rise. The defendant will rise. Adam. 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 What? Oh, all right. Let's get it over with. Adam Grant, you have been tried by a jury of your peers and found guilty. Do you have anything you wish to say before sentence is passed? Very well. It is the sentence of this court that for, for the, the brutal, brutal and, and despicable, despicable crime of murder, murder in the first, in the first degree, degree, you shall be put to death by means of electrocution. No! Not again! You can't make me die again! Restrain the prisoner! Put the leg irons on it. No! 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 Can't make me die again! Oh God, please! 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 Take him away! Yeah, you can't make me die again! Oh, God, please! 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 We all know that a dream can seem real. But it's also possible that reality might be a dream. We exist, of course, but how? In what way? As flesh and blood human beings, as we believe, or simply as part of someone else's feverish nightmare? Think about it. And then ask yourself, do you really live here in this country, in this world, or do you exist only in the twilight zone? We'll return to the Twilight Zone in just a moment. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, You'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop twilightzoneradio.com. Visit twilightzoneradio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. Shadow Play, starring Ernie Hudson with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Charles Beaumont. Heard in the cast were Christian Stolte, Nick Sandys, Elizabeth Lido, 
Roderick Peoples, Doug James, Ken E. Head, Martin Astrop, T.J. Jagodowski, Carl Amari, Tom McElroy, Meg Falcon, Damian Arnold, and Craig Harris. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group. Sound design and custom Foley effects for The Twilight Zone by Cerny American creatives Bob Benson, Craig Lee, Michael Slabach, and Matt Sorrow. To learn more about The Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James.